Hello, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Magda El Shinnawi. I am a professor of electrical engineering at the University of Arkansas uh, in Fayetteville. Uh, my talk today is about terahertz imaging of uh, excised breast cancer tumors using uh, human and animal models. First, I would like to acknowledge uh, my team. Uh, I am the principal investigator. We have Dr. Wu Signal Processing, Dr. Rajaram Animal Models, Dr. Nelson Machine Learning, Dr. Bailey is a pathology, and in the lower law, the most recent students who graduated with their PhD, Nagma, Tani, and Hao is also graduating this December, and Dijol was an undergraduate researcher. So I would like to acknowledge the funding I received from NIH. I received this award and then it was renewed. So this is my, uh, I finished the first three, four years and then uh, I'm still working on the problem. Uh, NSF, National Science Foundation, they funded me also. And one of the funding was really to focus uh, on the methodology. How do we do the imaging? How to do the uh, signal processing and all that. And uh, uh, the equipment uh, that I will show to you now is uh, also received from a grant from NSF. It was uh, almost 600K to buy the equipment. So this is our motivation. We wanted to differentiate between cancer and no cancer on the margins of excised tumor. So all our work is based on excised tissue. We don't screen, it's not screening. We do uh, look at the excised tissue, look at the boundary and to see if I don't, there is no cancer on the boundary, this is negative margins, or if there is a cancer on the boundary, which is a positive margin. That's our goal. According to the literature, the, uh, almost 20 to 25% of lumpectomy operations, they have this problem meaning the woman, they will close the woman and they, she goes home and then they will call her up uh, a week or two later, uh, later the, as, telling her she has to come back to do a second surgery. That's what we are trying to prevent with this research. So what is terahertz? Terahertz is a, a band of frequency between the millimeter and the optics. So this band, they call it a gap because there is no, so far, uh, specific applications that really needs terahertz, but it doesn't uh, 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 it doesn't work in other uh, bands. So, so the question is, can terahertz help in this margin assessment of the tumor? That's the research we are doing. All the other bands of frequency has uh, specific applications for years, uh, but uh, terahertz not yet. So this is a system I have in my lab. I have two scanners, this one on the left and the big one on the right. So the one on the left has a window to scan tissue of 2.5 by 2.5 centimeters. So this is the one we use for the uh, tissue. But this one is big. Uh, we did not use it yet in tissue scanning, but we will use it in the renewal of NIH. This is a diagram. The main source of terahertz is a femtosecond laser. So it hits the antenna. You can see here a meter uh, and the antenna will uh, take the, uh, um, the femtosecond laser, may transfer it to or transform it to terahertz in the blue lines. It hits the sample, reflects back and goes to the detector. So all the blue lines here are terahertz signal. All the red lines here are, is a femtosecond laser. If you look here at the signal, it's a pulse in the time domain in picosecond. So the pulse is narrow, so means meaning that the frequency, uh, uh, it's a broadband signal. As you can see on the right here, when you look at the broadband signal. So this is also other modules in, in the system. It's a, so it is a module-based system. So this is a reflection module that we, we will talk about it today. And also transmission module. Uh, you can image by uh, making the terahertz go through the uh, tissue. 
And of course, the gantry system, the big one, big scanner, we uh, will not talk much about it. Transmission module in a spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is meant to sing uh, transmission or reflection of a single point, not a scanning like imaging. So we have uh, a transmission in at room temperature or at very low temperature for Kelvin or at very high uh, 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 temperature, 573. In cancer tissue, we use the, uh, the room temperature. So now, uh, what are the sources of freshly excised breast cancer tumors? We have two sources. One is uh, uh, human and one uh, from human and one from animals. The reason that we went to the animal uh, model is uh, the number of tissues that we receive uh, uh, from human is not enough to do all kinds of research that we, we like to do. So we receive human tissue from biobank called the NGRI. It's reliable and we uh, pay for it. It's expensive and it's not, uh, it's not um, frequently. So we, we accept what we uh, um, receive, uh, but then we went to, to animal model. Our goal from the animal models, as, as I said, we want more tissue to work with and we want to decide or uh, investigate the tissue that is closest to human tissue. So we have three models, uh, genograph, transgenic, and rats. So first, uh, what do we have uh, so far from human fresh tissue? So uh, this table uh, shows the number of samples, uh, points when we do transmission spectroscopy, points when we do uh, reflection spectroscopy, patient age, and the excision procedure. So this is a tissue type. We have IDC only, like a piece of cancer, uh, uh, infiltrating ductal carcinoma. So this is uh, this type of tissue is our main goal uh, because it's uh, the most common cancer in, uh, in breast cancer is IDC. Uh, spindle cell cancer uh, we received this few but we don't know. Uh, although we requested IDC but we received it so we did not add any results to the IDC. Uh, then we wanted to look at only healthy so this comes from. The same NGRI, but it comes from breast reduction. And then the most important part is uh, all our results in imaging based on IDC with adjacent normal tissue, uh, because this is the actual problem that we are trying to solve, not uh, not isolated uh, points. So uh, all uh, the all the tissue is our uh, cancer tissue is our uh, excised is our lumpectomy or uh, uh, mastectomy. So these are the animal models. So the, we, those three, and why did we go from a genograft transgenic to rats? The genograft uh, tumor is very simple. So the, the, uh, the mouse is injected with E0771 breast uh, cancer cells and it, to, to grow a tumor. Then we excise the tumor, we put it under the terahertz scanner and we do the thing. We notice that this tumor it's very simple. It just has two types of tissue, cancer and the fat. And the you, you, cancer and the fat are very uh, differentiated. Uh, you don't need really need complicated uh, scanning uh, technology to differentiate. So we moved it to transgenic. Uh, transgenic is very expensive, but the problem is uh, the uh, tumors that uh, uh, grows uh, spontaneously. We don't. We don't really um, inject any cancer. It's very heterogeneous. It's just at least that the ones that we scanned, uh, the tumor is very heterogeneous. We couldn't see much more of healthy tissue. So we went back to the uh, went uh, to a third type, uh, the Sprague Dolly rats, because they are they can have healthy tissue next to the tumor. So this is what we, uh, that's why we moved from one to the other. So here I show you the, um, the uh, how do we prepare our sample for terrace. For each, this is a, 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 the sample uh, tissue we receive from NGRI, fresh. It's fresh, but uh, it is immersed in demim and antibiotic solution to prevent it from getting spoiled. So once we receive, we take small pieces, as you can see here, 
and we put it in a liquid sample holder here and then we put it in the compartment of the system and we do transmission spectroscopy to the goal of transmission spectroscopy is to uh, understand the properties of each type of tissue then uh, the imaging part we take the the, the tissue we need to dry uh, or get rid of the fluids that uh, around the tissue because the fluid will obscure the 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 terahertz signal we will not be able to see anything so first we dry it on filter paper and then we put the tissue in a sandwich between two polystyrene plates and then we put it on the uh, uh, reflection imaging as you can see here and we a scan so the top row give us spectroscopy single point and the lower row give us a, a scanning uh, imaging so here specifically we have uh, this rat here we took the tumor out so because we wanted to look at the inside to be able to understand the, how to differentiate between cancer and uh, not cancer so we uh, divided by two and then we scan each each one uh, this will increase the number of tissue we have and then we put that tumor here half of the tumor in the a sandwich of polystyrene we put it in the reflection uh, scanning uh, window and uh, if you look at the, this picture here uh, we immediately see two signals the first signal comes from the surface of the polystyrene plate we, we, we're not interested in this one we're interested in the uh, signal coming from the tissue this one so we uh, which what we call secondary reflection so we we focus on this one and we try to increase the focus and optimize it and uh, uh, do the use the scanner to image so here uh, the spectroscopy we wanted to uh, look at uh, the average uh, absorption coefficient so the one is that we have two models this model is the transmission so the uh, the signal will go inside the uh, quartz which is like a plate uh, made of quartz very uh, less attenuation there uh, go through the tissue go out from the other side and then we uh, get the absorption coefficient the other model here is a reflection so that the terahertz signal comes from below we don't care about this uh, reflection from this uh, polystyrene as i said but we care about the reflection from the tissue and uh, which reflects back and goes to the detector so this results here is uh, from transmission these two results are from the reflection so uh, this one individual means like i have piece of cancer only piece of fat only and piece of fibro only adjacent means that they are in the same tumor next to each other so the transmission is uh, yes uh, we have uh, nice uh, figures and uh, but in general in all three figures if you look at the cancer the red the college and the blue they are close to each other the properties are close all over the frequency and the fat which it is black is uh, very uh, differentiated from the other two types that's why in uh, imaging we see the fat very clearly so the other spectroscopy results that we see is the refractive index so uh, here is the refractive index the refractive index the, uh, decides or uh, we can obtain the speed of the signal inside the tissue the, the, the velocity so we also look here at the at the transmission they are very close blue and the red are close but uh, the black is uh, uh, further away from them at least for over a band of frequency so uh, I just to make sure that we are on the same page here the incident terahertz we are interested in the one that reflects from the tissue so which is this one so we uh, optimize it enlarge it and as much as we can by focusing the beam and then we get this signal so this signal will change from one pixel to the other if the pixel is cancer it is the highest reflection if the uh, uh, region or the tissue region uh, pixel is fat it is the lowest reflection 
So here is, uh, I will show you some results. So this is the first uh, tissue we did. It's fresh tissue. This is uh, human because uh, NEG means NGRI. So uh, the picture on the left is a photograph. The picture on the right is a, a terahertz image. So uh, this is a starting point. It was a starting point for us. So we did not uh, dry the blood. So we have a blood here and we have a blood here. And then we have cancer, fibros, and then uh, fibros, and the same fat in the photo. And then, uh, of course, uh, we know this from uh, the pathologist, right? And then we go to the, uh, the fresh tissue. You can see the cancer here. Then all the red, which highest intensity here, is coming from the blood. The red is coming from the blood. That's why we learn it from this result that we have to remove the dry the blood before we take terahertz imaging. And the proof of that, that when we uh, image or scan the FFBE tissue of the same uh, um, uh, um, uh, sample, uh, on the left is the pathology, on the right is the terahertz. You can actually compare uh, the fat, fat and fibrous, and the cancer is a darker color. Uh, if you look here, the cancer has the highest uh, signal because it does reflect uh, very strongly. So here I'm uh, showing you another sample, the fresh tissue, that the pathology uh, again and the, uh, the, the sample. And you can see that it is, uh, we can like uh, 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 compare, the comparison is valid. Here is the FFBE of the same one. And uh, you can see that it's always better to scan uh, a block and uh, not fresh tissue so far. So here is some examples that we have a sample from human, a genograft transgenic and then uh, the rat. So uh, the, the, look at the human, cancer is red, fat is blue. Cancer is red, fat is blue in the genograph uh, and also in the rat. The uh, transgenic mouse will stop doing this because as I said, the amount of healthy connective tissue is very small. So here is the FFBE, you can see the uh, it's better than the fresh tissue. We, I can say that we had almost uh, 95 uh, differentiation or more than 95 in FFBE using terahertz, but around maybe 50 to 60 when we, we scan in the fresh tissue. So this is a challenge that we are working on in the continuation. We looked at also classification techniques. So we have several classification techniques, machine learning and the statistical machine learning and the hyperspectral imaging. And uh, I, I will not talk much about it, but um, uh, every, all those uh, methods help it to classify cancer from no cancer. So what I showed you is that the terahertz really has good differentiation. Uh, especially in dehydrated tissues, the FFBE, the fresh tissue, we need to still wor keep working on it uh, because it, it, the fibro and the cancer in fresh tissue are a little bit close in properties. Uh, we learned that from the spectroscopy. So also the terahertz takes around 30 minutes to scan 2 by 2 by 0.5 centimeters. This is a little bit more than we needed to see. So uh, uh, we are not working on how to speed it up. We are working on how to, right now, we are working on how to differentiate the cancer from fibro in freshly excised tumors. With this, I conclude my talk and I would um, I welcome any questions that you have. Thank you very much for your attention.